Now we've talked about the two properties of radicals, the product property and the quotient property. However, there may be times where you're doing a problem and the radical is not simplified. When I say that, I'll explain. If we have an example that says square root of 2 over 7. Well, the quotient property that we've already covered says that we can rewrite this as the square root of 2 over the square root of 7. Now, with radicals, it's considered to be not simplified if you have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. It's perfectly fine to have a radical in the numerator, but we cannot have this radical in the denominator. Anytime we have a radical in the denominator of a fraction, we have to say that it is not simplified. So we must take steps to simplify it. The steps to simplify it is called rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the denominator so that we can get the radical out of the denominator and thus have it considered simplified. Let's try an example. We'll go back to what we originally started out with. The square root of 2 over the square root of 7. Now I just told us that the radical square root of 7 in the denominator makes this fraction not simplified. We can't have that. So we want to rationalize the denominator. In rationalizing the denominator, we're going to say to ourselves, what can we multiply? What other radical can we multiply the square root of 7 by to get another perfect square? Because if we get another perfect square, then we can take the square root of that and it won't be a radical anymore. Let's try it. I'll say to myself, I can multiply the square root of 7 times another square root of 7. Right? If I did that, we would get the square root of 49, which is 7. Thus, it won't be a radical anymore. It'll be an integer 7. So the next step is to say, I want to multiply the square root of 7 times square root of 7, but I have to do the same thing to our numerator. Square root of 7 times the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 7 gets us square root of 14 over the square root of 49. Now the square root of 49 is not a perfect square and it can be broken down further. So we rewrite it, 14. The square root of 49 is a perfect square. The square root of 49 is 7. Now, we don't have a radical in the denominator, so it's considered simplified. There's nothing wrong with a radical in the numerator. That's perfectly fine. This is our solution. Square root of 14 over 7. We've rationalized the denominator. Let's look at our next example. We have the square root of 3 over 8. Now if we think back to our quotient property for radicals, we can rewrite this. We'll rewrite it as the square root of 3 over the square root of 8. Now in looking at this, I would say to myself, we have a radical in the denominator of this fraction. We cannot have that that will be considered not simplified if we left that there. So we must do what we did previously, rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this, square root of 3 times over the square root of 8, and say to myself, what can I multiply the square root of 8 by to get a perfect square? Well, usually it works out if you multiply by the exact same denominator. Sometimes you might have to fool around with it a little bit and think of another number to multiply to make a perfect square. But most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time it works out by just multiplying by the same thing. 
but remember, not all of the time. So here I'll say let's multiply by the square root of 8. In multiplying those two, I'll get 64, which is a perfect square, and that's what we want to do. So I have to multiply the top by the square root of 8. Here we get the square root of 24 over the square root of 64. Now the square root of 24 over 64 is what we get when we did the multiplication. 64 is a perfect square. It's 8. The square root of 24 is not a perfect square. So for the sake of room, I'm going to rewrite it right here and say the square root of 24 over 8. Now there's no radical in the denominator and that's what we want. But I think we've already covered a section where we've broken down radicals that aren't perfect squares. We can say to ourselves, what is the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 24? Well, thinking to myself, the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 24 is 4. 4 goes into 24 six times. Then we can use our product property of radicals and say square root of 4 times the square root of 6 over 8 and then our solution is the square root of 4 which is 2 the square root of 6 can't be broken down further over 8 so we have 2 times the square root of 6 over 8 then we'll say to ourselves 2 over 8 looks like a fraction that we can reduce. So 2 over 8, and I'll write it up here just for sake of room. 2 over 8 reduces to, you guessed it, 1 fourth. 1 fourth. You still have the square root of 6. Now, when we write variables like x, do we ever write a 1 in front of the x? No, it's implied to be a 1. So we can do the same here say square root of 6 over 4 and write that as our final solution. Let's look at simplification a little bit further. In this we have 9 plus 3 times the square root of 2 all over 6. If we think for a second and say we have two terms in the numerator divided by the 6, it looks to be 9 over 6 plus 3 square root of 2 over 6. If we have more than one term in the numerator and then something in the denominator, we can separate them because the denominator goes into both terms. So we can simplify 9 6 because a 3 goes into 9 3 times, a 3 goes into 6 2 times. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 two times. Now we can put them back together under the same denominator because once again they're still like denominators. So all over 2 we can have 3 added to, and earlier we said that just like as in variables such as a variable x, we don't write the 1 in front of the x. So with radicals, we don't need to write the 1 in front of the radical. We can write square root of 2. We've just simplified that as 3 plus square root of 2 over 2. Okay, in this example, we have 10 minus square root of 50 over 20. We look at it and we say we don't have any radicals in the denominator which is good. However, it look like we can break down the square root of 50 a little bit more. So we can say to ourselves, the largest radical, the largest perfect square, I'm sorry, that goes into 50 would be what? 25. 25 is the largest perfect square that goes evenly into 50. So we can say it's 25 times 2. It goes evenly into 50 two times over 20. Now from this point we've usually been using the product property of radicals where we break it up into two separate radicals 
the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So we can do the same. We have 10 minus the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 over 20. And then we actually would like to take that square root. So we'll get 10 minus 5 square root of 2 over 20. So I'll write it up here. And then go back to what we did in the previous example. In the previous example, we know that 10 is one term, 5 times the square root of 2 is another term, and they're both under the 20. So the 20 is divided into both terms. 10 and the 5 square root of 2 is divided by the 20, and the 10 is divided by the 20. Now we know that 10 over 20 reduces to 1 half. 5 twentieths reduces to 1 fourth. In this case, we would say 1 half minus, we don't need the 1, it's okay to write the 1 there, but it's implied to be a 1 if we don't write it, so we can say the square root of 2 over 4. Right? And we've simplified that. 10 minus square root of 50 over 20 becomes 1 half minus the square root of 2 over 4.